Yep. You guessed it. It's time for your rotten theology lesson. Paul Washer. I mean, Paul Washer. I have a question. Why doesn't God use tough love when it really counts? Really. I mean, when it has the eternal repercussions. Tough love. I'm talking about feed the starving children of Africa. Yes, they're Muslim children. Jimmy Swagger said back in the 80's them Muslim children so right Jesus loved those children as much as he loved your children. Well, let's see some tough love. Why waste our food and feeding them so that if they die as children before they reach their age of accountability, they go to heaven on the merits of what Christ did on Calvary. Wouldn't that be the more loving thing for God to do? Let them die. They'll go to, go to heaven. Isn't that more loving than feeding them so that they can grow up to be Muslims and die in their sins and bust hell wide open? Huh? Let's get real, Paul Washer. That eternal damnation is a bitch. It just reveals how God's love is only for himself. And he just graces us with it of his free will. And we have and we have no and we no matter how badly we want it, if God does not want to give it up to us, there is nothing we can do to get it. But I just thought of something. The age of accountability is nowhere taught in that Bible. You cannot show me anywhere in that Bible where there is an age of accountability. No. In fact, in this verse of Scripture, Paul writes, For the unbelieving spouse is sanctified by the believing spouse. Else were your children unclean. Now this is what I heard a preacher say. The children... Of believers, if they die before they can understand and comprehend what they must do while still, if they die while still children, for before it's, it is possible for that they can comprehend. Once it becomes possible, all bets are off, then they go to heaven. Even if only one of the parents is a Christian. All of the children who die, they go to hell. I remember when I was 12 years old, here, here in preachers in revival, warning us about our children. Why are we sitting back and letting our little children go to hell? After the service, I asked them, is it possible for a six-year-old to go to hell? Preacher Answered, absolutely. That's right. So that's why it is loving to feed those Muslim children. Because it, you, you want to feed them, and not just feed them, but preach to them the bread of life. And hope, hopefully save some of them. Because if you let them die, they're going to go to hell. Because their parents, not only are they they're not Christian, if one of them is lucky and has a parent who is a Christian, he'll go to heaven. That child will go to heaven. Now hell for children will not be like hell for adults. This is what I see hell for a little baby 
Well, a, a, a two-year-old, or a three-year-old, or a five-year-old, or a six-year-old, they, they die. They suddenly find themselves in a place that is totally black. They're standing there, terrified. They hear from far away sounds that terrify them. That conjure up in their minds images of terrifying demons and monsters. That make them terrified that something's going to get them. But of course, nothing ever does. But they hear things. Their imagination starts playing with them. And they think to themselves, Why am I alive? Why am I alive? Is this, is this what being alive is? Why am I, why am I alive if it's going to be like this? Because I remember when I was a child in the crib and there was a siren, an ambulance or something driving by on the road behind the field behind our house and the light was flashing into my room and being a child of course, the only way I processed it was the light, there was a, this terrifying light in front of me. Flashing in front of my face, screaming. And I was crying, screaming, crying, and I didn't have words to form the thought. But the thought in my mind was, "Why am I alive? If it's going to be like this, this is terrifying. I don't want to be alive if it's like this." That's what hell is for the children. Now, when they're cast into the lake of fire. Jonathan Edwards says, Hell is such and such, but the lake of fire will be even worse. Understand, Paul Washer, John, uh, Jonathan Edwards wrote that a baby viper is no less venomous than a full grown adult viper. The moment you're conceived, you you are an abomination to God. That baby in the mother's womb is an abomination to God. The abomination, and hey, all the times when God commanded Israel to destroy everything, even the little babies, babies, that is a foreshadowing of the fact that there will be babies and little kids in hell. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his wonderful work to the, towards the children of, of men. Amen and amen. So be it. You're a psychopath if you feel that way. Oh, and if... God is truly on your side. No, let me take that back. If you are on God's side, and you believe in God and Jesus, and you believe in this lovey dovey stuff, <coughs> put your money where your mouth is. Stop talking all this beautiful talk. Start walking the walk. Dial my cell phone number 252 525 7929. And you take the time to talk to me, personally. Why am I wasting my time? It's not, not going to happen. One of these days, this gun and video like this is going to be real. I'm going to point it in my head, then point it at the camera, and shoot a bullet. Just so now you know, I pointed a live gun at my motherfucking head. <laughs> y'all won't, y'all won't give a shit.